How's it going, YouTube? Uh, this week, I wanted to look at some new modules that have come out and have just piqued my interest, I guess. Um, and so I've got them in front of us here. Got this rhythm module from AC modules, uh, this chord module also from AC modules, and this sort of sequencing module called Pick 6 also from AC modules. Um, I also have this VCO unit, which uh, is a smaller version of the VCO module that came out from Venom a little while ago, which I'll just bring up for us now. The VCO lab, it's just uh, like a single uh, oscillator version of this larger module. Both great modules. I just wanted to take a look at this one because it's new. And I really love the Venom stuff and I really want to see more of what they do because a lot of what they've released so far is more sort of utilities and VCAs and that kind of thing. So to see more like sound sources and uh, sound or audio manipulation uh, modules is always fun. <clears throat> I've also got this Black Noise uh, Cosmos module. And this SLU LFO module also from Black Noise. Um, and yeah, I've, I've made a, a little patch with these. So let's take a look at that and we can explore some of the options. All right, so I have this patch that I've put together here. Um, it's just kind of like a beat, a little lead line, kind of a bass line, and then some chords down the bottom here. Um, but in the whole patch, I'm using a lot of these modules that I've just talked about. Um, and so I'm going to start with the drums over here and I'll just unmute that real quick. So I'm using the proc modules, which I really love just for the, the sound source. But all the sequencing is being done with this, um, what is it, Rhythm rhythm 1101. One. <laughs> um, so it's a, got four outputs, four tracks. You can create your own sequences using these knobs. As you can sort of see here, we can move things around into different configurations. I'm just gonna undo that. Um, but then we've also got this pattern selector which gives us different drum patterns. Just presets, basically. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and of course we can modulate that. So I've got this uh, ADDR sequencer just here, which I'm just gonna bring in here and we can, I've got a little sequence set up so we can see it switching or hear it switching. And of course you can, I've just got this on a really basic uh, like clock, really uh, steady clock. But you could do some wild things with it with a, a gate sequencer. Um, so just as an example, like if I brought up a gate sequencer like this, um, I could use that as the clock instead. And um, <clears throat> get a, an, a different rhythm going. Let's try that. And this way we've got, it, it flips through them at a different rate. So let's try that. So you sort of, you know, remixing the beats all the time. So yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna stop that. And um, yeah, I just wanted to sort of uh, cover this because it's a really simple module. What's have got this uh, mutate here. Let's try that. So 
So it's like sort of uh, randomly adding mutations to the beat, which is pretty cool. Um, it'd be nice maybe if you could modulate this stuff, but I, you know, whatever, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's maybe not the point of the module. And you can do a lot of other stuff with modulating just the patterns here. I think it's a little bit unusual that you can't modulate these knobs. Um, granted, I know you can do it with, uh, like, the Storm Elder module. Um, the name escapes me right now. I, I looked at it in another video I've done. Um, but I could, of course, modulate them uh, without the aid of uh, an actual input. But, you know, it's nice to have inputs. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the beat that I've got going. I do have it going through this filter here from Proc also to High Pass Filter, which then also goes into the lower half, which is on a Low Pass Filter, which I can show you here. Really like these filters. Nice and, uh, I don't know, they're just kind of punchy, really kind of a gritty aggressive filters and they don't like full-on scream at you when you put the resonance right the right the way up it's like they're perfectly designed for drums which i just really like um and of course i'm going into debriatus here just because i fucking love debriatus it's just such a good sounding module I'm also modulating the clonk here, uh, the tuning. I'm just gonna um, make the cable op opacity a bit lower. Uh, yeah, modulating the tuning of it, the decay, and also the X and Y. So the, the drum sound is modulating all the time. I'm doing that with this wicked module, um, the SAC one, which is the Sicaria. Uh, they're all a bunch of random modules. Definitely check them out. I really love the Wicked modules. It's just W-I-Q-I-D. Um, just a lot of different random algorithms. Really good stuff. Um, and it's all going to this proc mixer. Really small mixer. Anyway, so let's just mute this for a second and let's unmute our second voice. So, in this one, it's, uh... It's using this uh, chord for Roy um, from AC modules. The chord, which is C minor uh, seven, um, and that's going into the poly info input of this pick six, which is kind of like a guitar. In fact, these in conjunctions are kind of like a guitar chord module. You can do different rhythms, different patterns. Um, I haven't fully explored it yet, but it's a really cool little rhythm generator. Um, it's got a bunch of preset little rhythms or riffs. Um, so what I'm doing is out from here, I'm going to this slew module from Black Noise, which, you know, there's a lot of slew modules. Uh, I do like the way this one sounds, and I know that's an unusual thing to say, but it's just got, like, a really nice natural rubberiness to it, which is always what I want from slew. Um... So I'm, I'm going to be using this more. And it also is an LFO if you want it to be. It's this switch here. Now it's an LFO. But I want to keep it on slew. Um, I've got these two VCO units. I know there are three, but I've set the middle one to low frequency. So that's acting as an LFO. Um, and you can see the output is going into the shape of both of these VCOs. And it's also altering the, sh the shape of this square module. Sorry, this square voice down here in the VCO lab, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and all that's going into these attack decay envelopes, or going into the VCA mix, and then it's being uh, modulated by these envelopes from Slime Child, um, which are paid modules. I bought a little while ago, kind of barely touched them because I was a bit disappointed with them, but they do sound pretty good. Uh, I've got this low pass filter here. Let's have a listen to that. It's a nice sounding filter, I, I gotta say. I, I should explore the Slime Child stuff a bit more, but I guess I was expecting a little bit more when, you know, when you pay for some modules, you kind of expect them to be a little bit better <laughs> um, than, than a lot of the other stuff, but that's just a lesson you learn and it's not really true, and in fact, so many of the best modules are free. 
Um, that said though, just as a slight digression, these proc modules, they are paid and they are excellent. So, you know, that is not always true. Um, but this uh, little sequence is coming from here. It's preset 39, but there are lots of different presets. And of course, if I change the chord or the root note, we're going to get, you know, totally different sound. So that's cool. And just as with the uh, drum module, we could, if we wanted to, we could modulate... Let's go back to the white cable. We could modulate the, um, the pattern to get evolving. And you could, you could set this to like, uh, instead of using a sequencer, you could use like a sample and hold or something. So you get really random, uh, sequences from it. But random sequences aren't always good and sometimes you just want a pretty basic, uh, sequence, which I think this one is delivering that. Um, also, just if anybody wants to give me some feedback, uh, I'm using all white cables here. Uh, somebody told me that the colors I was using are a little bit garish, maybe or a little bit difficult to read. Um, and that's fine. Uh, I do actually prefer when it's a consistent color. Usually why I might mix up the colors is because, you know, you want different colors for different tasks like gates or pitch or modulation or whatever it is. Um, but in this case, just going with white. Um, yeah, so that's that voice. Uh, ignore this chorus, that's from the voice below. Let's have a look at the other voice that I've got, which is here. And so, I'm using the same two modules, this time on preset 44. Um, to give us this sequence, and, if, and I'm using a different time, uh, a different clock division to give us a slower sequence. Um, and it's going, it's this VCO lab here. I've just got the sign and the square. Again, the square is being modulated by this VCO unit up the top to give us a, uh, a pulse width modulation. And I'm just coming out of the mix output because you've got, um, you've got these four different uh, wave shapes and you can go out individually if you want or you can mix them and there are levels down the bottom it's a very cool little module lots of uh, fun applications um, oh, I've got this uh, VCA mix in here which doesn't actually need to be there because it's not plugged into anything so let's get rid of that um, and in fact that means I can just fit this guy back down here so I'm going into this um, DE proc module, which is drum envelope, and that's giving us the envelope. It's also got a VCA built in, which is nice. Uh, I'm going through this um, overtime proc module, which is basically just distortion, bit crushing, and rate sample rate reduction. Just got a bit of distortion on it because it's a nice distortion. Um, and then I'm going into this filter from the new synthesizers.com collection, which I did a video about last week. And I think this is a great sounding filter to give, give it a bit more weight and girth and volume just going into Debriatus because that's just my current flavor of the month module. And uh, that's going into Joris, which is an analog chorus, as you can see right there. Um, and yeah, I really love the vault modules kudos to the guy who does them <laughs> and he also did the synthesizers.com modules as well really excellent sounding virtual analog modules so it's just this repeating sequence and if I unmute the one next to it they sort of play off each other a bit I'll bring the drum in So yeah, 
Let's just mute these again. And let's have a look at this last voice that I've set up, which is uh, some chords. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking the output from uh, this pattern sequencer here and the output from this pattern sequencer and they're going into this holder 8 which is a sample and hold or it's 8 sample and holds in one um, and I'm triggering that with the same um, with this uh, slower clock division and um, then the last voice is just noise so it's like true sample and hold so these two voices are going to be pretty much the same every time um, and they are offset a bit so they're not going to be 100% the same as the ones in the sequence above but then this last note here is always going to be a random note because noise just gives us random signal and for those who don't know what sample and hold does, if you feed it a signal and then you feed it a clock, every time the clock hits, it will sample wherever that signal is at and then hold it there for a while uh, or however long until the next clock hits. Um, and so if it's noise, which is a random source, it's just random noise, uh, you get different pitches or different um, CV voltages, control voltages. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of how sample and hold works. I love sample and hold. I use it all the time. There's so many ways you can use it. <clears throat> um, and these these three voices are going into this poly merge module, which is then going into this quant quantizer from Sikazel, which this holder is also from Sikazel. Love the Sikazel modules, I actually want to do a video just talking about them at some point. Really love the, the vibe of them as well, the sort of 80s VHS, like Commodore 64 kind of vibes. Um, and then going out from that into a splitter, and I originally had just one of these VCO units because they are polyphonic modules, but then I thought, well, what if I want to modulate them differently? And so I split them out, uh, split the signal out, and I have three modules now, for e one for each voice. And with this chordal here, which is a random module, and this VCA, uh, I'm sending some random signals to the shape, and also on these two, to the, uh, on this one, the linear frequency modul modulation, and on this one, the exponential frequency modulation. And it's just like the tiniest amount. Uh, on this one, it's actually a lot more. I don't know why it doesn't affect it as much on this one. <laughs> Either way, it's giving it some drift. Um, and as you can see on each of these, I've got slew from Black Noise again. And they are all set differently. So we're getting different rates of slew for each voice. So it's giving it kind of a, like a lo-fi feel, which, you know, I like, gives it some life. Uh, all these voices are going into VCA Mix 4 from Venom, um, and their mix, the mix out is going into the FZ filter from Squinky Labs. Great modules from Squinky, and um, I'm using this memory pad module, which is from Patina. Doesn't even say Patina on it, but that's okay. Um, and the funny thing about this module, I've never used it before, I'm just going to duplicate it so I don't mess up what I've been doing <laughs> but basically it records your XY movement so if I go like this it'll just loop that and then you get two outputs so the reason why I arrived at this as something I wanted to do is because I initially had this other module from a new module from Venom called Mousepad which, if I bring up a scope, you can see what it does. Uh, if I bring these two into the, each of these. Uh, so what it does, if I, with a, with a button combination, or sorry, a keyboard command. Uh, I think I need to toggle these on, actually. There we go. So now, it basically, my mouse movements are affecting the X and Y. Which is cool. And so I wanted to record that. But I couldn't find a module that would record my CV signals. 
Um, I did look it up. Apparently the air, there are some, one of which is not available on Apple Silicon, so I couldn't use that one. But either way, I couldn't figure out how to make it work. Ended up stumbling upon memory pad here. And I kind of just did what I wanted it to do anyway. So I just went with that. And that is going into Debritus once again. And so let's have a listen to what all this sounds like together. Really nice stuff, I reckon, um, if I do say so myself. But there is one final uh, cherry on top, and that's uh, Black Noise over here. A really interesting module that uh, I don't completely understand. I do understand, like, it's like what you might use it for and certainly how it sounds. But I don't understand all the math that's happening. You can see when you hover over the the uh, outputs, you're getting like uh, or gate triggers, and over here it's and minimum and gate and trigger. So they they do say what they are. It's basically a logic module. But what it really does is it you can combine two signals in a really interesting way, as you can see on the scope over here. And in fact, I'll probably I'll bring up uh, some other examples because I think it's really interesting, especially when you use a scope to see what sorts of weirdness you can uh, ha like, just what sort of shapes you can get. So if I bring up, um, if I bring up uh, two VCOs. Let's use these Bog Audio ones, and let's just do a sine wave into each. And this is just like you know, uh, sort of. Uh, bog, no pun intended, bog standard um, sound design kind of visualization stuff. But of course we get like beating if I change the, the pitch. But there's interesting stuff that happens uh, with these different outputs. Like it does strange things to each signal uh, or it cuts them off in different ways. Like... Uh, here we've just got X output, Y output. Here we've got the sum. Here we've got the difference. Down here we've got the inverted uh, through zero clipper. Up here it's just the regular through zero clipper. And then the trigger. Is There's just a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> and I just love seeing this kind of stuff on a scope. <laughs> um, of course all this stuff sounds interesting as well. So let's uh, maybe have a listen to what it sounds like. Oh, harsh. Harsh is what it sounds like. Let's bring it down a bit. So a lot of sort of cross modulation stuff going on. So, lots of fun, but that's not what I'm using it for. In this case, I'm feeding the chords that I just was talking about before into the right hand side, and I'm feeding the drum beat into the left hand side, and what you get is this. I'm just going out of the um, through zero clipper output. It's going into a bit of a chorus. And I think if you combine drum beats with something tonal, you get some really cool stuff. It's kind of like, it's almost like using a convolution reverb or something. I guess it's just like smashing the two signals together in interesting ways. I've got a bit of reverb going on it, courtesy of uh, Plateau from Valley. Um, so let's unmute the drum beat. Adds a bit more dimension to it. And then if I unmute the chords... And then the rest.
So yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about today. Um, I have uh, a lot of other ideas for videos that I want to I want to explore. If you guys have any thoughts uh, on what I should cover, please let me know. Um, I was going to do an entire video on like drum synthesis, uh, and like I said, I'd love to do a video on Sikazel modules. There's just so many uh, choices, you know, so many options in VCV. That's one of the reasons why it's such a great platform. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for today's video. I'm just going to leave this to play out for a bit. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think, and uh, I will see you next time. I'm just going to bring the volume up again, and we'll play it out.